Hello and welcome to this video on how we carry out calibration to determine concentrations of unknown solutions. It's very common in analytical science that we need to find out the concentration of an unknown solution. In this example, we have a solution of methylene blue dye of unknown concentration. How do we determine what its concentration is? The usual way to do this is to make up a series of solutions whose concentrations we know accurately and to compare them to our unknown sample using an appropriate analytical technique. That might be UV absorption, HPLC or GC peak areas, or a number of other things. We can then work out the mathematical relationship between instrument response and concentration, and use this to calculate our unknown concentration. This method is called external calibration, because the known concentration solutions we are using are separate to the unknown sample. Whatever method we are using to measure the concentration of the samples, the instrument response must be proportional to the concentration of the solution, and the relationship should preferably be linear, although it's not strictly necessary. We measure the instrument response for each known concentration and plot a graph of response versus concentration. In this case, we are using HPLC with UV detection, so our instrument response is peak area. When plotting a calibration graph, there are conventions as to which parameter goes on which axis. The independent variable, or the thing you control in the experiment, goes on the x-axis. In this case, it's concentration. The dependent variable, or what you measure, goes on the y-axis. This will be instrument response, in this case, peak area. The data points for the known concentrations are then plotted and a line of best fit, or regression line, is then added. If we plot the graph of the data from our experiment, we get a straight line. A regression line has been added using the Add Trend Line feature in Excel. This can also be added manually if you've plotted your graph by hand. Because the graph is a straight line, it can be represented by the general equation for a straight line, y equals mx plus c x and y represent whatever is plotted on the x and y axes. m is the slope, and c is the intercept where the line crosses the y-axis. The equation gives us the mathematical relationship between x and y, which we can then use to calculate the value of concentration if we measure the instrument response for the unknown. The line should only fit the points you have measured, so you shouldn't force the regression line to go through zero. Most analytical techniques have a level of background response even when the concentration is zero. If you force the line through the origin, you'll get a distorted value of the slope and therefore an inaccurate value for the concentration. Another parameter, r squared, can be calculated. This is a measure of how well the points on your graph fit the regression line. The closer the value is to one, the better the points fit the line. However, bear in mind that a good R-squared value doesn't mean that the points are in the right place. If you're plotting the graph in Excel, you can display the regression equation and R-squared value on the graph. In this case, the R-squared value is moderately good at 0 0.9935. You can see that two of the points are not quite on the regression line. To calculate the unknown concentration, firstly we need to measure the instrument response, in this case peak area, for the unknown solution. It's good practice to measure this in triplicate and take the average. This gives us our y value. The concentration is represented in the equation by x, so we need to rearrange the equation to get x on its own. This gives us x equals y minus c over m. Note the brackets. If you're using a calculator to work out x, then remember to press equals after y minus c, otherwise you may get an incorrect answer. Substituting in the numbers gives us a concentration value of 0.34 millimolar, which if we check on the graph, looks correct. 
Thanks for watching, and look out for more content coming soon on the Analytical Science Tutor channel.